All right, so what we're gonna do in this video is continue with the low poly project. Uh, I modeled everything in a previous video. In this video, what we're gonna do is the lighting, the materials, and finish setting up the scene. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so what we're gonna do with this one is start with the lighting and materials. Uh, I have already switched my renderer to Redshift and I've created a dome light where I loaded in um, an HDRI from uh, the asset browser. So you should be able to find it. It's called HDRI 019, I think. Do I have it here? I do not, but should be able to find it um, in there somewhere. So keep an eye out for it. And at this point, this is what I have. Not much, right? Um, but that's what we're here to do, finish this off. Now, a couple other things before we dive into the materials, I've already gone through and grouped everything. So um, I put my car in another car null and set it to the bottom. Same thing with the bus. And then for the trees, I put their axis at the bottom, but not quite the bottom. So that way, hopefully they don't stick out of the ground. And you know, I go into the reason why we do this um, in the Align to Spline Tag video that I just put out. So let's get started with the materials. Now, um, what I'm gonna do is just uh, start by creating some Redshift materials and just a several of them, right? I don't know if I'm gonna need this many, but that way they're already here. And I'm gonna just start with colors because once I start getting the colors in there, then I can go through and um, adjust, say the roughness or other properties. And ultimately, uh, this will make my life a bit easier. And I want to do the, the lighting and materials before I set up the scene, just so I get a better sense of kind of the overall layout, the contrast, and that all that type of stuff. So uh, I'm going to start with a blue. This will probably be my car color. So maybe something like that. I'm going to make the window color. So I'll do a lighter blue for that, almost like a sky blue. Um, I'm going to do a metal, and I'll just use aluminum. Maybe turn the roughness up on that a bit more, say yeah, 0.4. I'm gonna need three colors, so I'll do a green. And I'm gonna turn up the roughness on this. And a bark, so that will be a brown. All right, something like that. Turn up the roughness. Okay, and I think that's going to be uh, a good start. Actually, I take that back. I know I'm gonna need at least one more. And that will be kind of like a, a light color for the, the van and, I'm sorry, the car and the bus. So yellow, something like that. A little bit of roughness there. Remembered one more, tire. So gotta have a tire, kind of a dark gray, and adjust the roughness. So we'll probably still have to come back and do this, but at least we have some of these already set up. Let's start with the trees because they're gonna be the easiest. I'm going to expand them and then apply the green material to the cylinders. Oops, scratch that, spheres. And then come back in with the brown material on the cylinders. So pretty straightforward, no big issues there. I could go through and, and kind of use my render view and I like that. Like I said, I may come back and adjust the roughness a little bit, especially on the trunk. Um, but I'm so far so good. Let's start with the bus. So let's collapse all the trees down. Right. Oh, I darn it. I went, I forgot to go through and name everything on the bus. I did do it on um, the car though. So let's start with the main bus. And I actually think I'm going to want to make that a gray material. So that kind of works out. Go ahead and adjust the roughness on this. Kind of hard to see what it is. All right. Or even if there's a material on there. Uh, but we are going to need to make some selection. So actually, I will put that. Mm, it will still work. Uh, I take that back. Sorry for that. I'll move it up at the very end. But I'm going to make my window selections. Just go all the way around. Select my polygons for the windows. the front ones, drag my window material onto it. There we go. That's looking good. 
or anything else for this one. I think I want to make this front polygon kind of my light color. I'll drag that on there. That's looking pretty good for now. And then, like I said, I'm going to move these all up. Um, that way. No, it was working before. Um, darn it. Well, that way it gets applied to the wheel well areas. Because if you look, and it's a little bit hard to see, there's no materials really applied inside of there. So I could easily fix that by just um, applying this to down here as well. That should take care of that. Um, I think I'm going to apply the metal material. I'm going to hide the trees for just a second. Uh, to actually, I may want a darker material for that. So let's duplicate this, make it a bit darker. There we go, and that will go on the mirrors. I don't typically like to just drag materials onto things in my perspective view. You never know what exactly they're going to get applied to. Um, and it turns out in this case, I could have just applied it to the null for the mirror and have done it that way. At least that one since there. So, all right, making progress. Let's go with the lights now. So, going to a polygon selection. I already have that there. So I'll apply the yellow. And then I can just take my metal material and apply it. But make sure the metal material is to the left since that is kind of um, behind it. So the way these materials work when stacking is uh, to the left means on the bottom, right means to the top. And I'm going to repeat that process for the second one. Same thing, drag it on there. Really the only time I like to drag materials on there. And even then, I much prefer uh, choosing store selection, creating the tag myself and naming it, and then um, applying it that way. So we got our lights done. The metal can go on the bumper. And I think that just leaves us with the wheels. I'm going to select all four wheels. Going to try and do this at once. Get rid of that pesky work plane while we're at it. And awesome. And apply the metal to that. Um, let's see, where are my wheels? They're right there. Take my wheel material, which looks very similar to that one, but then make sure we apply it. And like I mentioned previously, it needs to go on the left hand side of it, so the bottom. And. That should just about do it. Let's preview this, see what we get. All right, not too bad. We may want to add some color to the bus, but we'll see. All right, moving on to the car. I'll hide the bus. See, everything is much better named here. So let's apply the blue to the base car and to the wheel wells. All right, you can see it a little bit easier now. Why we would want to do that, though, in theory, you could make it a different color. Select my base car. I think I have all the windows selected, just about. Apply my window material there. All right, apply my tire material first this time to everything. Another way you can do that to avoid having to move it once after you've applied it. Um, select the wheels. That for the, these extra guys. Go into polygon selection, grow this selection by hitting UY, then applying the metal material. So we'll work on all four. You can apply the metal material to the bumper, metal material to the test pipe, not test pipe, uh, uh, tailpipe, and back bumper there. Then all that's left is our front lights here. So I'll select these. I might be able to do all of them at once since they started as the same object. Perfect. I'll do metal and um, should have applied the other material first, but I'll just do it like I did before. Get over. That should work. Okay. I think that's it. Yep. Let's just double check it before moving on to our scene. Okay, looks good. Now I may want to adjust roughness now. This is obviously something I can adjust um, later on. There is one other thing I want to point out that perhaps might be useful though in just adding a little bit more detail. So I'm going to start with my tire material, which really all of these should be named. But 
Um, one of uh, the more interesting nodes that I don't think I've talked about is the round corners node. So this is like a, a bevel you can apply per material that happens at render time. And you can connect this just to the bump map property. You don't need to use the bump map node. Now, if you were gonna use this in conjunction with the bump map, you wouldn't need to use the bump map blender. But that will, if I zoom in here, come in and give us this little bit of a rounded edge, a little bit of a bevel there, um, which for low poly can be just a nice little way to add more detail. So there's with, there's without. So we end up getting just a little bit more reflection, which can be nice. So I don't mind that on my wheels, maybe even increase the radius to one. Now you can see it get a little bit bigger. So that's looking pretty good. And I could do this, really I would wanna do it probably more for my reflective materials. So the wheel, let's do it for the metal. Maybe that will be about it. So just something you could experiment with. And that um, I do think kind of works well since we do have not a whole lot of detail here, even for kind of the low poly look. So you can see what it's doing right there. And I think it's trying to do it for even between different objects here. And so in round in the thing, you can say consider same object only. So that way it's not gonna try and blend between the end of the light and the body. So I think that actually works out a little bit better in this case. Okay, so that looking good. Anything I wanna do here, bus? Still not sold on that color. Shoot, maybe even adding just a little bit more variation might help down the road. Um, you know, cause it is so plain and boring. Uh, but for right now, yeah, we'll leave it. So now to start um, making our scene. And the way we're going to start this is with a landscape. So I'm going to find a landscape. Clearly, this is way too small. All right. Or my other objects are way too big. Either or. Okay. And so maybe something like that will work. I'm going to want more detail with this. So I'll add some additional segments. I'm not too scared about segments geometry, detail, all right, I'm getting some weirdness. How big is this? Oh, that's, a, that's a bit large, maybe something like that. I think we'll be fine though. Okay, Um, what else? Maybe a little bit more variety in the, the rough, definitely the fine. I can always drop this into a subdivision surface, but you know, wanna have some detail here. Okay, and the first thing we're going to do is make a road. Okay, and there's a couple of different techniques we're going to use uh, to do this. So the first thing I'm going to do is come in here to my top view and uh, make a pen tool path. So I'm going to use my, make sure I get into model mode here, pen tool, and just kind of choose a winding road. And I know we can't see it at the moment. We will here very shortly. Okay. I'm going to bring it above. There we go. See it a little bit better now. It's not smooth yet. I will select all my points, right click, and choose soft interpolation. So there's my road. I may want to make some adjustments to it. Make sure I'm in my move. Make sure I only have a single point and single object selected. It's really just these end points that uh, I want to adjust. All right. But maybe also kind of make sure the points are that apex of the curve. Cool. So you may be wondering how we get this to kind of follow or lay flat on our um, landscape here. And the way we can get a spline to um, follow another object or be projected on another object, object is to use the project um, option in our spline tools here. Now, in order to do this, we need to have more points. We need to have enough points for it to follow this pretty well. And so the way you do that is, or one of the ways you can do that, because there are a few, um, is to select the spline, change the intermediate point, intermediate point type to uniform, and then really kind of raise this quite a bit, maybe something like 40. And then what I can do is right click on my spline and choose current state to object. Okay, so current state to object. You can see it's the second one. I could get rid of this first one, all right? Um, and there we go. We have more points. I'm going to keep this one though. 
just in case turns out I need more. So I like to just keep a null called OG or original geometry that has anything I may want to come back to, but that should work. Now the next thing to do is uh, to go to a view to project this from, and because I want to take this spline and kind of lower it till it hits the um, landscape here, I'm gonna go into a top view, right? So there it is. See it a little bit better now. I will now select all my points just to be safe. Right click, select project, choose what um, view I wanna use or mode, essentially what view as well. You can use different axes. So if I wasn't using this particular view. I could just set it to the Y axis and that should work. But I'll just make sure view, hit apply. Doesn't really look like anything happened, but now there we go. Okay, so yeah, uh, uh, I don't like where that's positioned. I think it's probably a bit too high up. So I'm gonna undo that, move it maybe more to the side here. So we're not like going up the mountain quite as much and then repeat that process. So project, apply. Okay, much better. Now what I'm gonna do is create the road. Okay, so I'm gonna create a rectangle, which will be the base shape. I'm gonna create a sweep, put both of these in there, call this road. Uh, and you can see, well, we got a number of problems here. Okay, so yeah. Now, actually, let's see, did I screw up? I might have screwed up here. I think I might, I did. So, what we're going to do before we create the road and project that spline, perfect, is um, use our surface deformer. So, rather than have the road, you know, be here as if it's the, the mountain hasn't changed at all. If you've ever seen that, you know that they kind of build up uh, the road to um, make it. So they, they do kind of work with the, the landscape, the, the surrounding area to make the road fit a bit better. And so that's what we'll do. Um, I'm going to need another sweep though, like I had. I just don't want my spline to be projected. Perfect. And what I'll do is, um, I don't think I need to make this editable. We are going to use the, where is it? Where is it? Collision deformer. Make sure that's applied to the landscape. And the collision deformer is quite fun. Um, I might do a separate video at some point, in, but uh, we'll just kind of get to the basics today. But it allows you to kind of let one object influence the shape of another um, as if it was colliding with it. So I need to go to colliders. I'll drag in my sweep. And now when I start to move my sweep, I really should. Do something about this axis so it's a little bit a little bit more convenient for me to get to so seven parent two perfect but watch what happens okay notice how it's trying to kind of push down a little bit and it'd be a little bit easier to see this if i hit it right so you can see how it's kind of flattening it out not quite doing as good a job as i was hoping for so what we can do is we don't actually want it to do that. We want it to do something like this, where once again, if I hide the sweep, you can see how it's kind of built up here. And so this is going to allow us to place the road um, on top of this. Now, the problem I think we're running into is that some parts of the landscape aren't high enough for this to, to work. Um, and that's really where I think projecting this a little bit could help. I don't want to project it perfectly. So we may have to use kind of both techniques here. Um, but let's see, because you do have in the collider a couple of different options, intersect, outside, that's kind of the opposite. Now if we hide the sweep, you can see how it's pushing it down. It's actually doing a pretty good job. Um, let's try inside stretch. There we go. So this is what I was talking about where, you know, the surrounding area might be built up a little bit to support the road. and. I guess we don't need to use that project if this is the method we go with, um, but it may not be a bad idea because, you know, what road is perfectly flat like this? Um, I guess there might be some, but, you know, not quite what I was going for. So um, I think this will work for today. 
only thing I wish is that my road kind of continued around this bend. So let's take my spline. I can't do that because it's been flattened. So why don't we just move this or rotate it a little bit? There we go. I'm just thinking of kind of the final camera angle, right? Where I may not want to see the road end. So maybe something like that. And in fact, I do like this for our kind of camera angle. I'm going to create a camera here, right click on it, add a protection tag so I can't move it, right? And then just because we'll eventually be using it, um, use a redshift um, camera tag on it. There we go. Okay. So I can hide this sweep. Say I don't want to hide it, but or I do, but I'm going to need to create another sweep. So this is sweep um, landscape, kind of give us that. I'll create another sweep that I'll call road. And then move this one up. It helps if I would show it a little bit. And I can now come in, make the rectangle not nearly as high, right? But I want it to be slightly narrower. Just something like this. Pull this up. And trying to pull it up high enough to so we don't see any of the landscape poking through. There we go. There's our road. All right, maybe a bit thicker than I would have liked, but nonetheless, I think it looks pretty good. Let's add a road material to it. And make this quite dark. A lot of roughness. And apply that to the road. Now, if we want to get super crazy. Well, first we have to figure out what to do about that. Um, I move this one up at all, or should I move it down? Not really working right there. Um, now we could always sculpt that. Maybe we'll we'll do, but we'll leave that for right now. So what I could also do. Uh, is get a middle line. In fact, lines in general uh, for this. Now, this could be a bit tricky, uh, so we'll see how how this goes. Um, a lot of this stuff I, you know, I've done before, but I haven't done it exactly in this particular um, project. I haven't gone through and, and kind of done this before. Um, so let's see, what's the best way to do this? Well, I guess it's going to be to create our lines. So. Let's say this is one line. That's going to be like a white line. So I'm going to want it to be pretty long. Maybe something like that. Kind of the outer line. Let's make another one. With a bit of luck, we'll be able to just adjust this stuff after. And I'm going to want segments going this way so it can deform and follow. So let's see exactly which way that would be. Nope, probably Z. Yep, definitely gonna need more than 20. I think we may need more than a thousand, but can I type in more than a thousand? Nope, well, we'll see how that looks. Okay, now for the dotted line, um, I'm gonna just duplicate that cube one more time, make it much smaller and just use a cloner. So uh, I'm gonna try and eyeball where the middle is here. Something like that. A lot shorter. Like that. And let's just apply um, the materials to this. This one will be white. There we go. This needs to go in a cloner. So I'll hold Alt so it puts it into a cloner. And I'm going to use the linear mode. I don't want Y. Want Z. So that looks good. Increase the count. Move this to the beginning. Looks pretty good. Looks pretty good. How many are we going to need? Nobody knows. Where's my count? There it is. Awesome. Group all this. If I was smart, I would have also made the road this way, so I could have done it all at once. But I guess this gives me a little bit more um, 
flexibility to make adjustments. Like if I wanted to switch it to a double line. So let's call this road lines. Um, I'm going to need to group that. Because I'm going to use a spline wrap deformer. Spline wrap, put it in there. Should hopefully size it around everything. And it does. Let's. Oh, I see, it's going the wrong direction. We want it to go positive Z. There we go. And we're gonna use the line from the road. Now, I'm thinking it's somewhere that just needs to be raised up. So, how can we do that? We could probably do it by offsetting this. Bounding box center Z. So that's working, just need to make sure I get the right axis. There we go. Great. That looks pretty good. Right. So this is what I was talking about where uh, we got pretty close, all things considered. Um, I don't need those segments on the, the yellow cube, though. So let's make sure we reduce that. That'll make Cinema 40's life a little bit easier. But where did that spine wrap go? Just a little bit more. Yeah, like that. I need to bring those lines in just a bit. So let's see, Do that one just a touch there. Do this one just a touch there. And oh, so close, but I can still use that bounding box option to hopefully fix this. Nope, box center, aha, perfect. So there we go, there's our road. Um, once again, looking through our camera, all right, starting to get something interesting. It's like we have a little bit of a landslide there. Let's apply a material to this. Now we could spend, I could make a whole video about making, uh, you know, a material for this, but let's just do a little bit of a, like a grassy green. I know this video is getting kind of long already and we still have much to do. So we'll do that. Okay. Ooh, yeah. Nope. Don't think we're going to do the reflection. So roughness, turn down the reflection. Okay. Great. You know, ideally I may want these to be snow covered. I may want this to be um, dirt and yeah, those are all nice touches that we can do. So let's start um, getting our trees in there. I think that will be a nice, nice touch. Uh, so I'm going to take my trees. I'm going to put them in a cloner. Okay, that's looking pretty good. Clone onto an object. That object will be my landscape. Okay, you can see there laying down. Can't have trees laying down on the job. So I'm going to uncheck align clone. And this is why it was important to have that axis not quite at the bottom so that they poke through just a bit and we don't see them floating. So now what I can do is just go crazy with the count here. Um, I will switch that to render instance and maybe set the amount here to say, let's just do like 300. Okay. Um, what I also should have done with these is hidden um, the FFD deformers so we don't see them. And that will also make Cinema 4D's life a little bit easier um, because that way it doesn't have to draw all those FFDs. What else are we seeing? One more FFD. Not sure what tree it is. One. So let's just turn that off, figure it out. So it's tree three. Okay, FFD, FFD. There it is. You're gone. Much better. All right. Cool. You may notice we have some trees in our road. That is. A bit problematic. Um, and dude, I can't. I, oh, I'm trying to figure out how exactly I did that. Um, we could always just use our MoGraph. Uh, where's our MoGraph menu here? Selection, and just paint out whatever trees we want. So if you select these, I'm trying to get just the ones here that are on the road. Hold Shift. All right, I think I got them all. You. Okay, so we have our selection. 
we could have used fields for, and I think that's actually how I did it before, but um, I can now create an effector. And in fact, there used to be one called hide selected. That's uh, just creates a plain effector where um, adjusts the visibility and it just hides those clones we have selected. So now when we look, got something like this, starting to look pretty good. I'm also gonna select my cloner here and I'm gonna add a random effector. Uh, that way, oops, that's not my effectors. We can just give these a little bit more variation. So not with position, um, but with rotation. I right, just rotate these a little bit. So 360, really 180 would work too. Scale, and let's see, maybe just a little bit with the most being on Y. So that way we can affect the height a little. But you can see how this just, you know, makes these trees look a little bit different, unique. And we could go through and use custom user data to add some variation to the green material here. Um, I did make a video about that, so definitely uh, check that out, okay? Um, but I think all that's left is to add our cars and our bus, and we're only gonna do, I think, one of each, okay? So I'm um, gonna select the car, I'm going to add an align to spline. I'm going to choose that spline from my road. And we can see, yep, that is exactly what I want. And that my car is way too big. So I'm going to scale it down a little. And click turn on tangential. Make sure I get it going the right direction. X. Great. So, you know, this is why I added that additional null down here so that I can use this to fix it. I just kind of offset it because it will still follow and do everything else it needs to do. So that looks pretty good. Maybe just needs to come up just a bit, All right? Now we're gonna get a little bit of intersection here probably um, just because these are so low poly, these wheels, but that looks pretty good. Okay, let's look through my camera to see where we may want to do this. This scene is not organized at all and it's driving me crazy. Maybe something like around here. We just cover up that, uh, perfect. Now we don't have to worry about it. Um, and let's add the bus. So same thing, all right? Bus, animation, line to spline. Use my road spline. Ooh, bus is way too big, but I'm gonna make it get it orientated right before I scale it just so I can get a better sense of the size it should be. Do something like that. And open this up. I'm probably gonna want the bus on the opposite side, going the opposite direction. All right, just trying to mix things up a little bit. We may run into a little bit of an issue if we try to get the bus going around the, the corner. Um, part of that shouldn't, ah, and that's because the object axis here is all the way up there. So what I can do is just take this and move it forward and just try and kind of guess where the middle is. Pretty close. I think that will work a little bit better. Yeah. Let's go back to our camera, find where a good position would be. Um, ideally with the bus not kind of going through the ground, maybe somewhere like there. And raise it up. Okay, let's get out of the camera, see if there's anything I don't like. Maybe raise it up just a little bit more to get those wheels. Perfect. And awesome. So cool. That's looking pretty good. Let's see what we got render wise. All right. Um, we don't want that original landscape to render. There we go. It's looking a bit dark. Let's see what we can do with our dome light here. Um, rotating it. It's gonna help a little bit. Maybe even increasing the brightness. Now what I could also do, just lighting wise to try and um, get something interesting would be to use the sun and sky. And that can give us a little bit more of a, a daylight, you know, Kind of vibe here and you can rotate the sun to get 
the shadows and time of day you want. Actually, I, I do like the way that looks overall. I probably would do a bit more with, you know, the time of day. Maybe something 